Hello again viewer and welcome once again to Planet Film. Uh, as you can see we're back in the dark room yet again. Uh, today we're going to do those couple of lift prints that I discussed in the previous video uh, just for a comparison with the straight black and white prints we did on RC paper uh, the other day. So let's get started. Okay, test strip in the dev. <clears throat> we have a uh, 20 mil part here, sorry, 25 mil part here, 25 mil part B in one litre of water for this particular brew. <clears throat> we'll start with the terminate development uh, time. It appears to maintain consistency throughout. That includes development time, uh, temperature. We can nail it down to hit the sweet spot that is lith, which is a fine balance between extended exposure in the enlarger uh, and extended development time certainly in lift developer. To put that into context we're working with the same two negatives at the same magnification. The difference is uh, I was working at an aperture of F8 and a 20 second exposure on the resin coated black and white prints. Here I'm working at F4 and a two minute, a full two minute exposure. So the difference is colossal. It'll take a while for this to come up. This test print's been in a developer for four and a half minutes and hopefully you can see that on the camera. The tone is just starting to come up now. Um, I'm hopeful but should this uh, should this development time go beyond about 10 minutes I think we'd inevitably end up with some pepper fogging or, or snowballing um, on the print which we try to avoid in lith printing um, the way to combat that is to keep your dev time temperature the same and increase exposure we could be going from a two minute exposure on the baseboard up to a four minute exposure on the baseboard. Well, we're nearly six minutes in. As I mentioned in the previous uh, previous video on, on lift development, what tends to happen is you wait a lifetime for development, uh, for tones to come up. And then all of a sudden, because of the, the nature of the development, infectious developer, oh sorry, not infectious, the developer isn't infectious, infectious development, the tones will really start to run away quickly, uh, particularly the blacks. I still think we're going to run out of dev time here. You can never nail it down to two negs, two even two similar negatives performing performing the same in the, in, the, in the, between sessions even same negative. You can keep everything constant, and the chances are it will still you'll still get a variation. Such is the joy of lith printing, the serendipity of lith printing. Well, we're up to seven minute dev time. The tones, are, the blacks are coming up. It's difficult under the red light, but um, and of course we've got these snow scenes, so the tones are beyond the the high contrast uh, of the dry stone wall and the grasses and the peat hogs here. The rest of the tones are very subtle, 
very subtle light tones I can see one coming up across here um, I'll stop this at 10 minutes keep the depth constant at 10 minutes and I'll, I'll double the exposure just to see what happens um, you have got a bit of a limit there are some limitations with the dev it does tend to oxidize quickly so the longer you've got prints in the dev or even tests in the dev um, the developer is constantly oxidized <coughs> the developer is constantly oxidized uh, through agitation as much as anything there's a large surface area in this tray so we're getting a lot of oxidization so the, de the developer is changing all the time even during the during the session and I suppose in reality if you really wanted to get um, precise about it the developer can be actually changing oxidizing becoming weaker even as you have a single print in anyway those tones are coming up slowly that blacks are coming up jet black that's what I like I do I like the look for detail in the highlights detail in the light tones let any blacks in the in the print let them look after themselves that's one of the hallmarks uh, of lith print so where do we go from here right well, we're actually on ten and a half minutes there so I'm going to stop and fix this and we'll have a look well here we have the serendipity that I love in lift printing what looked what looked like a print that was going to um, necessitate at least another test print or two it's got some lovely peachy tones in there on that 10 minute dev I think I'll increase the exposure a little bit um, just so we can pull a little bit more remember this is snow covered grass down here so the tones are very light but yes I think we'll jump in and we'll do a full size print off that excellent oh here we go <coughs> full size print more than happy with that the way that first first test print came out normally you'd be chasing these for two or three test prints and then you start chasing your dev oxidation so we're getting off to a good start I've uh, increased exposure slightly I've gone from 120 seconds up to 180 and I've also gave another 30 seconds on the on the lower third the print just saw that uh, there was a pretty dark shadow area on the neck on the negative here not the print obviously and I'm a bit concerned that we might might lose de uh, detail in there unfortunately the test print didn't cover that area so I'm flying by the seat of my pants we'll stick with our 10 minute dev Well, hopefully you can see that on the camera. The dark tones are just starting to come through now. We're already four minutes into this, Dev. Good, hopefully they'll start to rush along. Turn that print around because we're upside down <coughs> to the camera.
everything could start to happen literally in the last couple of minutes of the day, the last two or three minutes of the day of time. Which one's starting to come up now? Starting to run. This is a bit I like to see. A bit of dark round magic. Okay, we're eight minutes in. Unfortunately, looking at this print, I've had the looks like I've had the paper in the easel <coughs> a little bit cut eyed. Well, we're ten minutes in. Well, it looks to me like that could just go a little bit further. It's back to what I said earlier about developer actually oxidising in front of your eyes almost. So we'll push this a bit further. I'm looking here at the dry stone wall. Run it at the distance. I'm looking for that mid to want to come up a bit more if we can. The danger of pushing this, of course, is all of a sudden you'll get that um, snowball effect. The pepper spotting. Um, I'm not. I'm not so bothered about that. Um, it's a minor defect in. It can almost look like the grain of a, of a very, very grainy negative, but the snowballs are a bit of a nuisance. I can see detail in that sky all the way around this border, so we have got colour tone in there. So I'm not going to push me look now. I'm going to pull that. Uh, stop and fix. And we'll have a look in. In room light. Well here we are in the fixer. Um, it's a good one. Uh, you can see hopefully on here. I get the test bin round about where. Hopefully you can see on the camera, uh, I'll give it an additional 60 seconds exposure and we can just see uh, it's a more warmer peachy tone and there's a wee bit more detail in the area there, just below the sh that shadow side of that dry stone wall. I did give it some additional exposure, another 30 seconds on the bottom of about this bottom well, bottom quarter of the print really. I was merely concerned about this area here, but again we've benefited from, you can see how much warmer these tones have gone. There hasn't been a massive amount of extra detail come in there, in lift 30 seconds exposures, a blip. Almost exaggeration, but yes, um, I would have liked. I leave that print as it is. I'm I'm actually more than happy with it. But being as this, being as this paper is just um, gone a bit cut out in the easel, and I'm a bit obsessive about that. I think I'm going to put another print through. And I'm going to give it a, a full four minute exposure. And I'm going to give it about another 30 seconds again down on that bottom quarter. And hopefully we'll have it nailed. Oh, six minutes into the dev and those tones are starting to pop now. And here we go. Things are starting to fly, the infectious development is kicking in. The 
starting to fly. So here we are at 8 minutes in. Those plaques are really jumping now. I wouldn't go so far as to say that there's any real need for a snatch point as you sometimes require with uh, traditional straight black and white prints on fiber based papers. These blacks can move along remarkably quick. That's looking pretty good. We are 10 minutes in, I'm going to give it another minute. I think that'll do. Stop and fix. Okay, success. That's a good one. That's paid off, giving it that extra exposure. We've got four minutes across the entire print. And a 30 second burn down just on the bottom quarter here. That additional exposure just brought out the more peachy tones. So we'll get them in the wash in a minute or two. Uh, put the other neg in and have another go. I'm very happy with that. Right, we'll swap the negs over. Check focus. I've exposed this sheet exactly the same as the previous negative. Uh, four minute exposure followed by a 30, 30 second exposure on the to bring the sky down just a gradual burn down. Time's coming up now. So we're well, six minutes into the development time. Once again I'm letting the blacks look after themselves. I'm looking for that all important tone in the highlights. Essentially the skies were, were whited out. So all we're doing, same as before with the black and whites, just looking to pull some colour tone into the sky area. Just so you're not looking at paper white, base paper white. Eight minutes into the day. Hopefully you can see those blocks with the naked eye, I can see those blocks jumping. They're really starting to race away. Get a mid to one detail revealing itself here. Those trees down in the down in the valley. They're showing a face. So it's looking pretty good so far. So here we are on 10 minutes. I'm hoping this will be the, the last print of the session. I can't see the eel in that sky just around the around the top against the border. Against the white borders of the print. I'm really going to push it. Those blacks are sooty black. They have raced along happily with the infectious development. I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it a bit further. I can't see anything. It's starting to go bad in the highlights in the sky there. So I'm really going to push me look blacks in those trees down in the valley. They were quite a subtle soft tone of grey being and they were in the distance and um, there was a bit of cloud coming over and it was quite a lowering sky. I'm, I'm watching those because if those mid ones really start to jump I think that's when uh, you start to get issues with snowballs and I think I'm going to yeah, I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to pull this 
and hopefully everything will be good. Well, this is what can happen when you push your luck. Um, it's okay, but I think I'm now at the mercy of developer exhaustion. Mostly developer exhaustion, so I'm, I'm going to mix up another litre of chemical just for this print. I think I might be tempted to give it some additional exposure as well. I can see the, the border of the easel starting to show up along this uh, top right edge quite quickly compared to the previous print. <coughs> Obviously additional exposure plus fresh lift dirt. So we might get lucky. Eight minutes. Mm, I was hoping it would have been a bit further on than this but uh, there was trees down in the valley uh, looking a bit darker, a bit quicker than the previous uh, print. And there's some detail coming to the front now. Whatever it looks like, it's going to be. I think it's going to definitely be an improvement on the previous print. That cloud that was coming down into the valley from the right, I can see that. Jumping forward here, I can see a lot more detail uh, on both sides here, not so much along the top. As long as there's some tone in there, something to hold the image in. And we're going to push it again. Now we're on 10, but I'm going to give it a bit longer. It's amazing, those two negatives, the second one printed at exactly the same exposure times, uh, the ex exactly the same exposure time as the first print. Um, resin coated paper the developer doesn't make any difference really. You can't really over develop resin coated paper. And then both prints were pretty much acceptable. As I say, this one I had to give additional exposure and we're in fresh lived dev. So um, it has a mind of its own without a doubt. I think we might be okay there though. Those blacks are really lovely sooty black shadows. There's a lot more detail in those trees down in the valley. Well, I'm going to take a chance and pull that. Well, I don't mind admitting I was nearly panicking a bit there and I was feeling a bit disheartened. Uh, and I've had the print in the fixer for a about a minute and I put the light on and it actually didn't look massively better than that uh, previous print. Maybe it was because I was coming out of the red light being under the safe light for a good 15 minutes continuous so your eyes do adapt. But I'm cut right in the on the borders of the easel again, um, but the white border is evident along the top there. So there is obviously there is torn in, torn in the sky. As long as there's a bit of torn in there, I'm happy. This area is nice down here. We've got some lovely peachy tones down here. Um, compared, I've just left this floating around at the back, compared to the previous print. Huge amount of difference. So I should have sticked to the original plan. Couple of, couple of 1216s fresh dirt for the next print. Massive difference. Extra, additional exposure again, as well as that extra, as well as that 
fresh developer so uh, yeah I think that one's okay we'll get them in the wash okay here we go we're in the wash these are the two prints of the first negative this one's under lost a bit of detail in the sky the tone is still there um, it's still got a bit of tone in there you can see that okay hopefully and that that will probably when the print dries down that will probably be a little bit more evident but um, it's still a usable print actually I'm going to keep that one I'm going to persevere and wash that this one's definitely a lovely lovely straight lift print no hint of any snowball or pepper fogging uh, I was setting print I was sorry I was setting negative um, yeah yeah I'm happy with it it's there was it's a different scene and there was a lot less detail in the sky no detail in the sky it's just a matter of getting some colour tone in there which we've achieved against the white this will dry down again um, so that one's okay I'm not going to bother doing any more prints that first one's a wash out I'm not going to bother uh, trying to do anything with that one but these two uh, these are goes this one's an okay uh, I might play with that with some toner or something I don't know but uh, yeah these two I'm happy with the original mission uh, I wish to to do these two prints and see off the same two negatives and make a comparison so we'll give these a we'll give these a thorough wash as fiber base paper needs um, and then we'll get them we'll get them dried and we'll make that comparison well we got there in the end here we are with our little comparison first up the straight black and white print on resin coated paper nice neutral print good blacks in the shadows I love a bit of mystery in the shadows then we've got this lovely tonal range receding into the into the background I particularly like this this shadow side of this dry stone wall where uh, there isn't even any, you can see all the texture in all the brickwork and the snow on the side here and on this side it's just flipped to a, a, a monotone line that leads you out of the frame so I'm happy with the shot itself but we'll flip over to the uh, to the lift print okay so chalk and cheese isn't it um, what we have here is former tone warm based paper you can probably see that hopefully on the camera uh, the borders of their image are a much more creamy ivory look compared to the resin coated prints a bit of an awkward material to work with but uh, it's worth it in the end uh, one of the reasons I'm wanting to do this comparison is really just to um, just to illustrate working with fiber based papers is it's not difficult but it's long-winded and at the end of the day you can get a nice lovely black and white print on resin coated paper dead quick dead easy um, th this process fiber based process paper processing is a bit more involved um, so my way of thinking is well if you're going to do all that extra work let's have something different and this is why I like the lith process because it just the pulls apart really um, you can see here obviously this is warm peachy tone this tone is off the developer it's a black and white paper but straight off the development you're getting this lovely rich warm tone here we have the resin coated print off the second negative again nice range of tones quite a low contrast scene but um, it's just re rendered these tones nice and black in the shadows here we've got that lovely mid tone in the trees in the background a splash of light breaking through from I couldn't tell you where but there was a bit of there's just a lovely splash of light down in the valley there I think that really makes the scene to be absolutely honest no detail in the sky that was a reason for burning it down on the enlarger overall a nice print but let's have a look at the lift 
So here's our lift. Again, increase in contrast. For all, it's a very low contrast scene, but the print itself has uh, increased the contrast, the nature of the process, the infectious development. You can see here how much the shadows have blocked up a lot more. There's less detail in the grass. Um, the trees down in the valley there, they're, they're standing out a bit more, and that splash of light I mentioned down in the valley there, it seems to be glowing uh, a little bit more than on the on the straight resin coated print and of course you've got the lovely peachy tones off off the lith process um, I'm really happy with the former tone uh, multi-grade paper uh, it's a fiber based paper as I've mentioned fiddly to work with but I think at the end of the day the results speak for themselves it's created something different and that's what it's all about really isn't it right that's a wrap for that one we'll see you on the next one